Hey, this is Pat McDaniel with Wise Insights, and I, I got to show you this. This is this is absolutely crazy stuff. I don't think you're going to believe it until after I lay out all these research studies, at which point you're going to say, I can't believe it. But I can't believe I have to believe it. And that is it has to do with decision making. We all make decisions. You make decisions. I make decisions every day. And I think we would all agree that the better the quality of our decisions, the better our life is going to turn out. And we know conversely what that means. But what most people do not know and what research has now verified through a lot of different testing is that there are certain influences to our decisions that we're not aware of. They're hidden. They're below the surface that are significantly impacting our perceptions of what's going on and on which we make our decisions. I recently had a, an infographic created dealing with these distortions, these influencers that no one seems to be able to see. Um, in neuroscience and psychology circles, they're called cognitive biases, or I call them cog cognitive distortions. And so this particular infographic goes through 50 of these particular biases that really impact us in ways that we just aren't fully appreciating. And um, there's a lot of information on this infographic, and I'll tell you uh, at the end of the video how to get this for free. But the, the one that I want to take a couple of minutes to go over that I think you're going to go, wow, is um, this one right here called priming, the priming effect, where we can be introduced subliminally to a certain information or certain fact or a certain perception of something and then that will impact how we make decisions from that point forward and how we actually behave and and all sorts of stuff um, and I'm getting a lot of this from a brilliant man named Daniel Kahneman Daniel Kahneman wrote a book he's a Nobel prize winning ec economist and he's gotten into a ton of research and he wrote this book called Thinking Fast and Slow which is an absolutely fascinating book. Uh, it's well worth the read even though it's a little bit meaty when it comes to some of his uh, research. But um, he talks in there about what I'm going to share with you these different research studies related to priming and the first one that they did. They did a research study where um, they had people come in to do word studies and um, a, a, a word puzzle kind of stuff where they, they said, here, we want you to figure out uh, these word puzzles. And they had these, these groups of people come in and they did these particular word puzzles. And that's what they thought the this was testing them about, like their their mental abilities or whatever turns out that the real research was being uh, viewed after the fact. And so what they did was they had in one group, they had people who were being introduced to certain concepts in the word puzzle. Um, things that related to like the elderly people. So things I could say like Florida or it'd say wrinkle or it would say bald or it would say, you know, some stuff like that. And it would be built into the word puzzle. And then over time, um, they were slowly being primed to think in terms of the elderly. So um, once they got finished with the test, because only one group had these little words sprinkled in, the other groups did not. So what were the results of the test? So they had them go through these word puzzles to get to the real test, which was monitoring them walking down the hallway to hand their word puzzle results into the scorer. But what they actually were doing was that they were measuring whether the subliminal influences of the concept of the elderly caused them to, I guess you'd say, identify with the elderly and then affect how they went down that hallway. And so what they found was that the people who were primed to think in terms of the elderly were, here's the term, significantly more, a significantly slower time down the hallway. Like they were probably moving in a sort of a hunched over way, unbeknownst to them, slower, just, and it was, and it was 
undeniable based on looking at the, the, the data of the different groups. It was like this one group was just unbelievably different than the rest of them. And it was all because they were primed to think in terms of the elderly in that particular example. In a different and separate research um, study that they did, they were priming people on concepts and words, unbeknownst to them again, um, related to being polite or being rude. Um, and what they were doing was trying to figure out would introducing certain concepts, again, unknown to them, they weren't, they weren't aware that they were like, they're feeding me all these terms about being rude. It was just very, very subtle. And it was all built into another supposed exam, uh, uh, test that they were doing that had nothing to do with that test. It was having to do with, with these terms. And so then they had them walk down the hallway to these, they were actors, who were collecting information from them after they did their study. And they, they monitored how they reacted to these people because the two people that they went down, the person they went down to hand off this thing to was actually in the middle of a conversation with somebody else. And so they walked down the hallway and they waited. Now, here's where it gets so crazy. The people who were um, in the control study meaning they weren't given polite terms, they weren't given rude terms. They're here in this middle section. Um, but the people who were in the polite uh, study group, they interrupted these two people talking far less, uh, three times less than the people who were introduced to the terms of being rude, where they were kind of thinking, well, you know, um, excuse me, um, I just need to talk to you really quick. I, have, I was told to come here. And they were more pushy and they were more rude in their insistent behavior. And so, again, the priming effect had a significant impact on the behavior and how they perceived their situation that particular moment. In a third study, this was with voters out in Arizona, what they were trying to find out was if priming them in terms of schools and school imagery would cause them to vote more significantly in favor of an amendment on the ballot to increase funding for local schools. And so they had different groups. They had some that were that were voting in a school versus those who were voting outside the school. Then they had another uh, test where they had people who all, all the people in the study were voting outside the context of a school building. But they had in one of them, they had certain things in the background that were kind of like lockers and things that were trying to, I guess, communicate the idea of schools and kids and buses and things like that. And so what they found was that both groups were significantly more likely to support, uh, the increase of school funding compared to the control groups. And in fact, it gets even crazier. This, these study participants were parents and non-parents alike. You know, some people who could care less about schools based on their age or their stage of life. And yet the people who were primed with these images were um, signif significantly more likely to vote in favor of the school funding amendment versus even parents in the general population who were not subject to this test. Tell me that's not crazy. Now, I've got the craziest one of all. In this particular research study, they did some things that were very, very subliminal, very, very off in the peripheral of the study participants. And again, the study participants thought they were being studied for something entirely different. But in fact, what they were they were watching was whether some of these things would impact the way they viewed uh, the situation. They were being primed about money related concepts and words. And they were things like you see here this image of floating dollar bills. Um, this was a screensaver that was playing off to the side, not even where they were in the middle of the test. It's sort of like in the room with them and the, it, the screensaver was running, but it wasn't 
a part of the tests that they were doing. And so here's what they discovered. They discovered that the people who had been primed with the money concepts turned out to be much more independent, more selfish, and more me first. Um, so a couple of examples. They, uh, the, the money prime participants were less willing to spend time helping another student who came up to them pretending they, that they were confused with the experiment and could you help me? And the money prime participants were much less willing to help spend the time. They were more focused on me first, I guess. Uh, they did another part of that uh, test where they had an experimenter walk into the room with a bunch of pencils, like in a cup or something, and accidentally spill them onto the ground. And the money primed individuals picked up fewer pencils, which again indicated a lower willingness to help and to serve. And so they, they went through all of these little minor micro tests all around this, these concepts of money. And what they said was this, that the uh, primed participants were, quote, reluctant to be involved with others, to depend on others, or to accept requests from others. So the question comes up, okay, I see that this is really going on and we don't know it. So what do you do about it? How do you combat this kind of stuff? I've got a couple of suggestions on how, what this information should make us do differently. So the first thing I would say is this, we ought to be far more humble about our decision making than we typically are. You've, you and I have all been around people who are absolutely certain they're right when in fact, they probably are influenced by things that they cannot see. And so let's have a little bit of humility. Let's have a little bit of humility to recognize that maybe I don't see the facts as clearly and as unbiasedly as I think I do. And I may actually be wrong. So we just need to be okay with that and not feel like we've got to um, always be right about stuff. The second suggestion I would have and there's, I've got a bunch more suggestions for you and techniques and things you can do in an ebook I have on the wiseinsights.net website on decision making. So go there and pick that up. But I would simply say this you can't go wrong to get some additional input, particularly from people who you think are wise and who are sensible, um, and just kind of get their perspective on things. Basically, what I call is what I call triangulate the truth. So here's what I think is true, but you two are telling me that the truth is a little bit more over here. Huh, okay. So maybe I am being distorted or biased or influenced in some way that I can't possibly see. And so by getting inputs from outside, uh, from people outside of yourself and, you, and outside of your perceptions, you have a better chance of having a clearer picture of what reality really is. I invite you to go to the wiseinsights.net website uh, and pick up this infographic. It's got a ton of really valuable information that you can work through uh, at your leisure of these different biases. Uh, it's got advice at the bottom about ways to combat some of this stuff. Um, all you gotta do is go to wiseinsights.net uh, and just put in forward slash infographic and it'll take you right to the article where you can download the infographic and get this um, with with no charge at all. Hopefully you'll find it to be most helpful. I created wiseinsights.net because it's like me. Um, I'm a very motivated person. I'm somebody who wants to to reach my goals and, and hit my dreams and, you know, have my life be more and do more than it currently is. But I know in my journey, I've run into so many people who are in the same boat who are like, I want more for my life. I want more at work. I want more at home. I want, but they're frustrated. They're uh, struggling. Uh, they're disappointed. They're, they're hitting roadblocks and, and difficulties. Um, and, and here's the thing. There are, there are ways to get around these obstacles that research is now showing us, wow, this is how things really work. And so my goal is to help 
folks like you find a faster, easier way to get to where you're trying to be and ultimately experience some level of success. And so we use modern research, we use ancient wisdom, things that people have learned from many, many millennia about how life works. And hey man, don't beat yourself up. Don't beat your head against the wall trying to get ahead. If you follow these particular uh, insights and wisdom, you will come out so much further ahead. Hopefully you'll also get a little bit of inspiration. You'll get a, a little bit of humor and a lot of encouragement. So go ahead and head over to wiseinsights.net forward slash infographic and pick up the infographic that goes through all of this stuff free of charge. Do me a favor, leave a comment, you know, something about uh, maybe a particular one of these cognitive biases that surprises you the most or seems the craziest or whatever, or whatever you want to say is fine with me. I'd also request that you leave feedback here on this uh, YouTube channel. Uh, if you found this particular video interesting or helpful. And then um, I would encourage you using Twitter to retweet the, the uh, particular tweet that I sent this out on so that you can um, spread the news to others if you found this helpful at all. Hey, this is Pat McDaniel, wiseinsights.net. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful, and uh, I'll look forward to talking to you again soon.